Okay, here's the uh, prototype Rascal Pocket Bock, whatever we want to call it, the battery operated 3D printed version of the little guy brought to life. And um, there we have it. So we've got uh, the two AA batteries in the back powering it and this one like I say is a a demo a prototype whatever you want to call it because what I designed this thing to work with would be with the TT type motors either the yellow ones or the blue ones the blue ones have the metal gears and have a 1 to 90 gear ratio the yellow ones you can get either in the most popular 1 to 48 or 45 whatever it is gear ratio and then the 1 to 120. And of course the 1 to 120 is the hardest to get but that's the one that would be best for this for the walking speed. This is one of the uh, 1 by 48 gear ratio and it's really too fast when it uh, you can put them in there and the robot would walk but when you're moving this much mass it tends to get a little bit tippy. Of course the wind-ups were tippy too. They would follow every now and then. So in order to slow this one down I took one of the white TT type gear motors. As you can see these are bigger than these, slightly different dimensions and the motor that's in it is bigger. This is the motor out of one of the white ones and here's the motor out of any of the other TT motors. So you can see they're quite a bit smaller. The biggest, uh, this is a much better motor but this motor doesn't even start running till you hit it with uh, over 5 volts. It's preferred to run on 6 volts. So in order to get this one working, since I do have the blue uh, TT motors with the metal gears on order, which is what I was hoping to use in this, but they haven't arrived, I took uh, one of these and uh, swapped out the motor, pulled out the long one, inserted a shorter one and then because the dimensions of this box were slightly bigger I printed the uh, a new frame that the motor goes into which would be you know down like that this one won't fit because this is meant for one of the TT type motors you know like like this actually they go in this away so down in there like that and the uh, cams go on the uh, motor shafts like like so Got to get them opposite each other, like that. And of course, before you slide it together, you would you would put the legs on the uh, on the cams, and you would put it all down in there and slide it all down into place. You would fish the wires around till they come out here, and then come out to this, which could either be a front or a back. So that's the plan once they get here. But till they get here, I wanted to uh, get one running. So like I say, I adapted it to run on these uh, hard to find larger ones with the uh, bigger motors and works quite well. So I'm hoping that once the uh, new motors get here, the blue TT motors, then I'll build up another one. I'm uh, printing the parts for the body in a translucent red filament, which is a, a PETG filament, P-E-T-G, because I wanted to see how the uh, uh, Bamboo Labs A1 Mini would handle with PETG, and uh, so far it seems to handle it really well, because the, the eyes in this upper part are in PETG, but I like to do the whole body in that kind of translucent kind of look. And um, what else? I think that's it. So I don't really see any reason for any updates on this project uh, until the gear motors arrive and then we'll we'll do a build. You'll probably see a demo video first but I'll shoot them in order. In other words I'll shoot a video of the build assembling uh, the red one and uh, then of course a demo video which I'll release first so that you'll know if you're even interested and then the build video will come out shortly thereafter. Uh, what else? Oh, the only real drawback to uh, making the body parts and stuff out of the PETG, the PETG, is I can't use my weld on number 16. It only works on PLA type plastic. 
it won't work on PET-G, which means you'll either have to hold the body halves together and this piece up under the bottom of the body with a, a super glue type product or with uh, E6000. And I'll probably be using the E6000, which isn't good for build videos because it takes longer to set up. But it's better for the built robot because it will last longer. Super glues uh, being so crystalline and rock hard and just a surface glue tend to crack and let loose in a year or two. Whereas the uh, E6000 isn't going to let loose because it's more rubbery like a silicone type glue. And it uh, will last much longer. And I'll see if I can't get uh, both eyes to blink in the other one. Those are both blinking uh, LEDs in this one, but it seemed to be picking up enough um, enough noise, they call it, on the power supply lines from the motor that the little LED isn't uh, happy because the flasher circuits are inside the LED and they're actual or actual digital control circuits, so noisy power supply lines tend, tends to make some of them react erratically. Both LEDs are wired in parallel, so why is this one working better than that one? I don't know, maybe it's just a better flashing LED. It doesn't really bother me that much, it was just a prototype. It kind of gives it character that it's winking at you with one eye.